this lecture we will learn about the five step approach to evidence based medicine. We start with a very important question, why do we need better evidence? People have outlined 20 major reasons for better evidence, for better healthcare. So we need to look at the publication bias, poor quality of research, evidence production problem, research which are more likely to be false than true, reporting bias in the research, ghost authorship, financial and non-financial conflict of interest, estimated cost of new treatments, under-reporting of harms, delayed withdrawal of harmful drugs, lack of shared decision-making strategies, trials which lack external validation, trials which fail the regulation, criminal behavior by the researcher, lack of surrogate outcome, unmanageable volume of evidence. Clinical guidelines beset by major structural problems, too much medicine, prohibitive cost of drug trials, trials stopped early for benefit. So these are 20 reasons that have been identified in the manifesto for better evidence for better healthcare. So whenever we are looking at the research publications, we need to look at all these points. The evidence-based medicine originated in the second half of the 19th century. Simply put, it means conscious and reasonable use of best contemporary scientific evidence in making a decision for the treatment of each individual patient. It integrates clinical experience and patient values with the best available research information. It is a movement which aims to increase the use of high quality medical clinical research into clinical decision making. EBM requires new skills of the clinician including efficient literature search, application of formal rules of evidence in evaluating the clinical literature. In summary, whenever we are looking at a published study, we need to look at whether the investigators assign exposures. If they did, then it is an experimental study. If they, if they did not, then it becomes an observational study. Experimental study, if it was randomly allocated, it becomes a randomized control trial. If it was not, then it becomes a non-randomized control trial. Observational study, if involved comparison, then it becomes an analytical study. If there were no comparisons involved, then it is a descriptive study. And analytical study, if the depending on the directions, whether exposure and outcome were analyzed at the same time, it becomes a cross-sectional study. Whether outcome was related to exposure becomes a case control study.